I want to share a testimony with you. It is coming from a particular woman. She has given me prior permission to share it. You are going to see that sin is something that you don't want to do. You are going to find out that other people are having bad lives as well, but they are choosing to serve God anyway. So even if you have a bad life, you have to know that other people are as well. Everyone needs to come to God. So let me begin. My mother married my father. They got married because my father raped my mother. My father's parents pushed my mother to marry my father. My mother did not tell her parents because she felt ashamed about the whole incident. A year later, my sister was born. A few years later, after that, I was born. My father raped my mother. This is how I was born. I was born out of rape. My father made it very clear that I was not wanted. From the age of three, my father would beat me every day. Around that time period, I would see demons that looked like aliens, gray aliens. I would see them at night. I would get so afraid. I would get so afraid that I would want to be by my mother. My father did not like that. My father took out the light bulbs out of my lamp. By doing this, I became much more afraid. I was even pulled out of my bed by the demons, my Lord. My father forced all of us to go to church on Sunday. I guess to show other people how great of a man he is. We obeyed to go to church with him because we were afraid to get beat by him. He drove my mom insane. I slept right next to my parents' bedroom. I could hear my mother get raped by my father every day, Jesus. When I was 11, my father came home with a man. He was 28 years old. My father brought home that guy for me. The 20 year old man wanted to do things with me. I refused to do those things with him. I wanted to escape him, so I ran as fast as I could. The next morning, my father left a note for me on the table. It pretty much said, here is 25 guilder, now euro. Goodbye. So at age 11, I was homeless. I lived on the streets for almost two years. I became addicted to heroin. The state was wondering where I was. They was wondering where I was because I was not attending school. Okay. I went in foster care nine times. I ended up in a home for difficult kids. I was abused there for a few years. I became pregnant there and had a child, my eldest daughter. I love my eldest daughter. B 
being pregnant prevented me from killing myself. In foster care, I came in contact with a witch. I was so enamored with her eyes. It was like as, as if she could kill with her eyes. So at age 14, I joined the occult. Thoughts about Jesus would come to my mind. I didn't know why. I started to think, my life is hell. God doesn't want to help me. Does he even care about me? My priestess died in a mortar vehicle accident. After that accident, I moved, yet witchcraft followed. I get into Satanism and the dark arts of Aleister Crowley. I obtained a lot of books on spells and curses. I started to tamper with the lesser magic, Solomon's magic. One day I was painting my walls with a friend. We started to get the chills. All of a sudden, my friend got thrown over the table, demon. When that happened, I tried to seek out help from a church. This was the first time when I went to church, they was not interested in helping me. I got so angry at God and went back into witchcraft, my Lord. I figured out that it doesn't make sense to fight a curse with another curse. I met a man and gained a lot of weight. When I married him, I did not know anything about him. He turned out to be a murderer. He committed two murders in front of me. He even forced me into prostitution for drug money. He started to beat me up. When I became unconscious, he injected me with heroin. After that, I became addicted to heroin again. I was raped by my husband. I received two children from my husband. My children were born out of rape. Around the sixth year of my marriage, I tricked my husband into a divorce. I did that because we were so much in debt. Also, he would beat me every day. One day he got shot by a police officer. While he was in the hospital, I took my kids to a safe place. I was ready to move from his home. I had to go to jail for a short time for stealing a phone. When I came back home, to the man that I was married to, he locked me in the home, in the house. He would do this when he would get ready to beat me. A particular time when he was abusing me, I thought that I would not survive. He strangled me around five times. Each time he strangled me, I would lose consciousness. When I would lose consciousness, he would revive me. This process happened five times. My eyes became really red from being strangled so much. One day I took a bus as far as I could afford to go. I still live in this town. When I arrived in this town, I had to go to a night shelter because I had nowhere else to go. I became sick, so sick that my skin had a greenish tint to it. 
I believe my skin was changing colors because my red blood cells were almost gone. I received blood transfusions, but my body was destroying the blood quicker than the doctor could give me blood. Hmm, something like that. I believe there is a mistranslation there or something. My mom and children visited me that evening to say goodbye. I thought that I was going to die. I was surprised that I survived the next morning. I thank God for that. I spent more than two months in the hospital. I had to undergo chemotherapy treatment for more than 50 weeks, almost a year. I learned that I had leukemia. I heard a song that I have not heard since I was young. A song about Jesus dying for us all. The name of the artist is Julie Miller. The name of the song is How Could You Say No? When I listened to this song, I started to cry. I saw God as a father figure to me. This is when I wanted to change my life. When I stopped taking chemotherapy, my eldest daughter and I went to a Baptist church. When I stepped in the church, <clears throat> immediately I became very ill and agitated. After 10 minutes, I started to have difficulty breathing. Something was choking me. I did not say anything to my daughter, but she looked at me and was alarmed. My face became red, almost purple. When this happened, I waited outside until the service was over. Yet, I wanted to obtain a relationship with God. So I went back inside to converse with the leader of the church. I wanted the leader of the church to help me. He gave me conditions. I was told that I would have to become a member of the church and give him 10% of my income. I left disappointed. After this, I was being plagued by more and more demons. My daughter moved out of my home because she couldn't sleep. People would come to visit my home, but they would get angry. When they would leave, the condition would leave them. They would not be angry. At this moment, I am still searching for a church. I found a friend in God on the internet. I'm developing a new relationship with God. I am progressing further. Every day gets better. So this concludes the testimony of this woman. As you can see, this woman's life was really bad, horrible. Now, if she can go through this and still come to God, you can do the same thing as well. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless you.